Hi everyone, it's Lou Collins. Thank you for joining me. We have another Distress Oxide colour combination video and today we're looking at Rustic Wilderness, a beautiful grass green, a really nice dark green as well. We're going to compare it to other colours in the Distress Ink and Oxide range and we're going to be blending this into some colour combinations. So let's start first of all with swatching this and I always use my brushes onto just white cardstock and let's see what it really looks like because sometimes the label and the ink pad can be a little bit different to what it actually looks like once it's dried onto cardstock or paper and I think that's quite important to remember is that the wet ink where the uh, dye is still soaking into the paper uh, is often a little bit darker or suddenly a little bit different to the dried version so that is rustic wilderness now this is a little bit damp still but you get the idea it's a beautiful green a lovely dark green um, quite a vintage color as well I love that now while this is drying and we see the color coming through um, just let you know that the blending brushes I use the blending mats I use the ink pads and even the free distress chart that you can download and print up at home it's all available linked down below in the description I get a lot of questions about them uh, but they're all there linked for you to see so there's that green. Now I think that is actually not too far off at all. The label, uh, the ink pad of course is darker. We expect that. Now let's just give this a quick wipe and let's compare this to other greens in the range. So on my chart, I've got yellow greens, green greens and blue greens there. Um, I think we're mostly going to be looking at the middle strip here. You can see Rustic Wilderness is the third one down on this strip. Um, these strips have been laminated with a matte lamination pouch so um, that's, that's why they might look a little bit more frosty than the colour on the cardstock as you see on the swatch but essentially that is Rustic Wilderness. You can see just above it mowed lawn is also quite a dark green within the range but it's brighter, it's definitely more yellow, a little bit brighter. Uh, Lucky Clover has more of a teal colour to it coming down because pine needles is also a dark green um, but again much more on the teal side and I can't see anything else that is comparable at all so I do think rustic wilderness really does stand on its own here so let's jump into some color combinations now I have to say if you've been watching me throughout the rest of this series I apologize for the change of lighting for the big ring light here um, I'm kind of halfway between studios at the moment I've cleared out my studio to rebuild it and uh, make it into a proper studio so I'm working in a small corner of my home with temporary lighting so um, apologies for if, if you're not keen on the light on the mat I'm not keen on it to be honest but it's the only way I could still continue to bring these videos to you so I'm going now from Rustic Wilderness into Iced Spruce for our first colour combination and look how beautifully these two work together aren't they just stunning so so gorgeous now because iced spruce has a touch of blue in it i believe in my opinion and iced spruce does have a video all of its own that you can go and find on the playlist then we're going to go into speckled egg because it's got that blue tone to it which again for me works so nicely into iced spruce there's barely any blending here required at all for a color combination for a background how beautiful is that i would definitely be using that for winter scenes for example there's so so much it's gorgeous isn't it so you've got rustic wilderness you've got um where are we ice spruce and then you've got speckled egg there as well now the, the second combination for you today is a four colour one as usual and we're going to be throwing in some purple with the greens. I adore purple and green together. I have done since I've, lit, I've been little. I've probably mentioned a few times before about when I was little having a purple and green coloured bedroom. Um, I even used to, when I used to underline my writing in my school books, I would use purple and green, the two colours as a double line. Um, so yeah, really, really love the two colours together. Um, Rustic Wilderness works really nicely with some of the darker purples. So the first colour I put down there is Bundled Sage. So just blending this in. Now because this is such a light green going into a darker green, it's going to take a little more working, but not too much. So just taking the dry brush there. Well, I say dry, it's got a little bit of the bundled sage still on it. Just working over that blend line there, as you can see. 
Then we're going to take this into Dusty Concord. Always keep your old brush beside you or the, the last brush you used because the chances are you'll need to use that to come back and do some additional blending. Now I'm going to just wipe off this green before I go on to the next colour. There we go. So look at that. Dusty Concord is such a beautiful dusky colour, if that makes sense. So it's kind of got this lovely sort of frostiness to it. Now, I can see there from the blend line, I'm going to need more green. I'm, I can't do that just with what's on the brush. So when I apply more colour, the first thing I do is I go along the solid colour line. I don't go into any of the blended lines. So start there and then start working that colour down into the purple. Now, because this is purple and green going together, you're likely to get this kind of foggy, smoky colour between them, maybe even verging on a brown. Um, but it still creates a really nice blend. Now again, because I did apply more green, just give that a quick wipe. And you also want to, if you can't turn your mat over, you also want to dry it as well, because otherwise the water is going to react. So lastly, milled lavender. This is the fourth colour that I'm going to be adding. This is a purple, but it's very close to a pink, a very, very, very light lilac lavender colour. It's absolutely beautiful. So I'm going to pop this nice and solid on the end. I think I've actually picked up a cardstock strip that isn't made for ink blending. It's probably one that's um, where the fibres are not so close together and they don't absorb the uh, inks or the dye of the ink evenly. So you can see this sort of patchiness happening. Now this can happen if you don't choose your cardstock correctly. My favourite cardstock to actually blend onto is the... Um, Creative Craft Products Super Smooth Cardstock. This I grabbed from my scraps tray, so it probably wasn't that. It was probably actually a strip maybe from something like a card base, an old card base where I've trimmed it down or something. It definitely isn't the super smooth that I'm used to using. So if you get that issue, try changing your cardstock. It's probably not your blending. So I think that we need a little bit more blending going on here. The milled lavender is such a pale colour. So it's going to take a little bit of working between the two, but just working those small circles back and forth, back and forth. There we go. Again, as always, that's always going to look better once it's dried. But let's take a look at that first colour combination as well. And while I grab that, don't forget as well, if you haven't done already, please do check out the playlist with all the other colours that we've done so far. We're working through alphabetically and please do also subscribe to my channel. I'd love that. And if you enjoyed this video, a thumbs up would be wonderful. I hope to see you again very soon. The next colour is going to be Rusty Hinge, which is a huge favourite of mine. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you soon.